You highlighted the diversity within healthcare. It's not just one group. There's hospitals, there's med tech, there's biotech. And so it sounds like you are focused on the biotech story, at least right now. What are some names that uh, are, are speaking to you? Yeah, so the, the biotech chart you put up, those are large tech, large yep. cap biotech stocks. Um, a couple of the names that really screen well right now that are really defensive, one would be Gilead. Gilead is the dominant player in HIV. HIV affects over a million people in the US. It's a $30 billion industry worldwide. And it's a very stable and consistent business. Um, Gilead generates a ton of cash from it. It's not a high growth business, but it is very you know, stable. I have a lot of confidence in Gilead's earnings going forward. And um, you know, the stock has it has done well this year, especially over the last couple of weeks with Q3 earnings, but it still has legs some of its other peers. So. so let's talk about, you know, not high growth, but perhaps a little bit more stable because I remember kind of the Harvoni days for Gilead. This is a company that can have a blockbuster drug, but then you see it, sometimes it's so effective, right? It it, it essentially cures what it what it's trying to treat and, and it peters out. It sounds like you're saying that maybe this time, this cycle, this drug line cycle, uh, drug pipeline cycle for Gilead is different? Well, the, the HIV business is very stable. It's cash generative. I think it's probably worth about $70 a share. What's interesting is... Um, and Gilead's is, 82. And Gilead's 82. Yeah. So what's interesting is um, the oncology platform that they're building. Um, they acquired a company called Immunomedics back in 2020 for about $20 billion. Um, they have a key drug in there called Tradelvi, which is indicated right now for a few different kinds of cancers, but they're going to expand that label. And, um, you know, you're really getting a lot of that oncology upside for free. That could be the growth driver for the next 10 years for Gilead, whereas the HIV is probably not very high growth, but it's it's stable. And what's the other one in in, in biotech? Is it it's AbbVie? AbbVie, yeah. yeah. And what do you like there? So AbbVie sells the world's number one drugs called Humira. It's used for treating a number of autoimmune disorders, including arthritis, uh, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis. And Humira goes off patent next year. So um, I think investors are a little bit concerned about what that's gonna look like. You know, it's $23 billion a year going down to maybe 12 or 10, you know, it could take a huge revenue hit next year. Mm -hmm. And again, I think that's well understood in the stock, but what isn't understood is what the company looks like two or three years from now. And it's really important that AbbVie is able to backfill some of that lost revenue from, from the Humira patent expiry. And they do have a couple of next generation auto um, uh, drugs and immunology that have so far really exceeded expectations. I think will continue to deliver growth for that company.